Okay, so today what we're going to do is we're going to utilize some of the knowledge that we gained uh, with respect to uh, lists. And what I'm going to ask you to do is to create a list of 20 numbers. Okay, so. create 20 numbers from let's say 1 to 99 and I'm, I'm not going to create 20 right here just to demonstrate but what I am going to do is I'll just have a few like 8, 4, 6, uh, 2, 7 and now what we need to do is, so let's just say this is L. How would we, um, oh, uh, just a minute here, I forgot something. Okay, uh, just technical glitch, we got it going again. So, um, now that we have created these, um, this, this list, how would we sort this list? Okay, so our first step is to create them. And then our second step is to sort them numerically. Now, I know this is actually very simple because all you have to do is go L.sort and, and you're done. But uh, I think it would be, it's better for a learning experience to actually sort this manually ourselves. And the algorithm which I'd like you guys to use is uh, it's called selection sort. And so what I want you to do is go through this list and find the smallest member. And you can actually, you know, create a, a function for that, you know. Now I know, I know there's one built in to Python. So like if I actually go to my terminal and if I launch IPython, and I said L is equal to uh, something like, wh wh what did I say here? Uh, 84627. 84627. So if I now go min L, that's going to return the smallest one. That's built into Python. But we've, I think we did this before. What I'd like you to do is to write a function called find min and pass in L and it should return the two just like the built-in min does. Now why are you going to need that? Because when you when find min returns the two, okay, you're going to have a return statement here. Uh, now you're going to know the value or the item that is the smallest or the, the, the minimum one, but not its index. But that's okay because now you're going to create a new list, let's say called SL for sorted list, and you're going to take that guy and you're going to put him into here. Now obviously if you put the, the smallest guy that this returns into this new list, you can't leave this one here because now if you do it again, you'll find the two again. You're just going to keep adding twos. That's not what you want. So when you add it into here, you also have to remove it or take it out from the original list. Now, you do this algorithm until there's nothing left in L. And then SL will have everything and it will be sorted. So go ahead and give that a shot. Okay, so uh, here comes the solution. So uh, first thing is, um, well actually, you know what, let's, let's do this in, uh, let's not do this in the interpreter. Let's do this in, uh, let's do this in Genie. And um, 
that was an old program. Okay, let's. Oh no. Well, let's let's just make a new program here. Okay, so let's. Where should we save it into? Uh, let's put it into here. And let's call it um, cell sort for selection sort. Cell sort .py. Okay, so first thing we got to do is we're going to have to import random. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, go into a loop for x in range. Okay, uh, another technical glitch. Okay, here we go. So let's make L into an empty list and let's go for x in range uh, 20 because we're going to get 20 random numbers. And then we'll say L.append, right? Because we're going to be adding to it. And let's add uh, random dot rand range and let's go from 1 to 99 which is a hundred oops okay and that's it so let's now print L just to see if it's working before we do anything else let's let's run it now okay so yeah looks good now these by the way, these don't have to be, there's no criteria here that they be unique. Obviously, you can see we have some duplicates here. There's a 21 and there's another 21 right there. But that's fine. Okay. Um, so let's now go to sort them. Let's, now, in order to do this, let's make a function called findMin. And... Let's iterate through. Uh, let's assume, first of all, let's let's uh, let's let's say our small is equal to l zero, right? We assume, right? We'll, we'll put a comment there. We'll say assume uh, first item is smallest okay and then let's now go for x in range and um, we'll go len l and then we'll go um, if LX is less than uh, small, then small equals LX. Now, once we're finished that loop, we can return LX. We have a choice here. We could return X or LX. Because you see, X is going to be uh, the index, right? Um, well, in this case, that's not quite true. Small small is going to be that's not quite true we'd have to get we'd have to find uh, well you see it depends here uh, let's just let's just leave it this way there return LX we're returning the value just like min would okay and now let's Let's test it. Print find min L. Okay, and let's run it. And 
is 44 the smallest one? No. 26 is smaller. So, so see, this is why it's good to test stuff. Also, 10 is smaller. I think 10 is the smallest one there. Uh, oh, yeah, that was stupid. I'm supposed to return small, not LX, because LX would be the last one. OK, early in the morning. Uh, well, not too early, but I'm still tired. OK, uh, let's save that again, and let's run it. Yeah, that's better. Oh, guess what? It just happens to be the last one. <laughs> Great, let's run it again, just to be double sure. OK, that's better. Uh, so that was our smallest one. Okay, the four right there. So it at least now we know it's working. See, the what I'm trying to teach you here is you should always test parts of your program as you go along building it because you want to make sure that all parts are working and it's easier to test things as you're going along. So right now we've just finished testing this function. We know it's working now. And um, let's move on. So now what I want to do is I want to kind of go into a loop where I, I say while, uh, I could say len l is greater than 0. In other words, while there is something you know, in L. Now I'm going to start taking stuff out and putting them into SL. So I've got to make a new list called, which is sorted list. Now I'm going to say um, num equals uh, find min, calling the function L. And then I'm going to say l.remove num. And then I'm going to say sl.append num. And, and that's it. Uh, I think by the end here, if I print sl after this loop, I think that should do it. Let's try it. And it looks good. So the random or generated one is on top. And this is the first one. That's the smallest one. And the biggest one was 96 right there. So and that, that looks good. That's in increasing order. Perfect. So that's what we wanted to do. And um, so that's, that's that solution. OK, so uh, your next assignment is going to be this same program, selection sort. But this time, instead of Feynman returning the smallest number, I want it to return the, small, the index of the, small, of the smallest. So in other words, if we go back to, oops, um, if we go back to the, this diagram here, right? and um, if we were to here have indices, so this is still L, right? So we go uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. In this case, the 2 is the smallest number, right? But it has index 3, right? So now this we would call find, we'll change the name to find min in find minimum in or find minimum index or find small index and and now instead of returning a 2 we it's going to return a 3 and that's not the number it's simply the location of where that smallest number is and accordingly you'd have to modify obviously you're going to have to modify something else in the program not just Feynman. So I'll change. Let, let's let's let's. Uh, we could save it again as a different name. Don't modify it because it's nice to uh, 
So we'll call it, how about cell sort 2. And um, now we can go ahead and go find mindex. OK? Find minimum index. Although sometimes you know it's kind of nice to go like this when you do this kind of stuff, although I really don't like getting into um, a camel case very much with uppercase and lowercase, but I could do that. OK. So I can just put an underscore there. Find min index. So give it a shot, and, um, and then we'll go through the solution. So pause the video now. All right, let's give it a shot. So if we're going to return the smallest index, um, let's say that small equals now 0, OK? And we'll say uh, if Lx is less than L small, now that's an index, right? Then we'll say small equals x, OK? And so uh, this will assume first item index, OK? So now small is 0. So now that's like, L, that's like saying if it's less than L0. Now, honestly, like we could put a 1 here, right? because we don't have to, to test it against itself. And we could have done that before, too. But now what's interesting is when you, we'll call this uh, um, how about we call this mindex, minimum index, right? And now. Instead of doing remove, we can't do remove, right? How about we do L dot pop? Because pop takes an index. And we'll go mindex. And here's the cool thing. When you pop it, you can actually take this and put this straight into here. Because it when you pop something, remember, it returns the smallest index. So uh, I mean, you don't have to do that, but it would work. Um, maybe that's too much on one line. So you could go something like, well, let's just, let's just try this for now, and let's just see if it works. Uh, oops. Find min is, oh yeah, right, because we called it find min index. How about we call it find Mindex. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, so uh, you know what? I changed my mind. I, I don't want to call that thing find minimum index. Let's call it find mindex. It, I like that word. Uh, there. And so let's try it now. And it looks like it's working fine. So uh, that looks good. Yep. So like I said, if you want to do it all on one line, you could. Or you could just say, you, you could go like this. And um, you could cut that out, put it here, and then put small here. Maybe, maybe that. But notice the cool thing, right, is that pop is actually doing two things, right? L.pop, it's taking it out and returning it. So if we run it again. Uh, it's still fine. All right. So that was the solution. Uh, hope you enjoyed it, and we'll uh, we'll see you guys next time.